The Happy Model Crux 3 NLR is a stealthy little drone. It weighs around 100 grams and you'll get about 15 minutes flying time on one of these 18650 lithium ion batteries. And it's mighty stealthy because it's just so quiet. You'll be able to fly this almost anywhere and no one's gonna bother you. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. And this is YouTube. You know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. These super lightweight quads have been around for a while in various shapes and sizes. They started off as 3D printed frames that were basically a flying 18650 battery holder designed to fly on a single cell, like one of these. And this Crux 3 from Happy Model follows the same design idea, but it uses molded frame parts, so hopefully it'll be a bit stronger than the 3D printed versions. This comes in a GPS and non-GPS version. Uh, the GPS version is around $145, and the non-GPS version is a bit cheaper. That's $130. And I'll put links in the description so you can check out the latest prices. This frame is basically an 18650 battery holder that's fixed to a top and bottom molded plate. And there's a couple of three millimeter carbon arms. These are continuous through here and they're squished between them. The flight controller is a toothpick style all in one F4 and one board with five amp BL Heli S ESCs. And very conveniently, there's an Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver on board. You can just see here the ceramic antenna mounted on the board. So there's no need for RF antennas. And I'll be using my Radio Master Zorro to control this. It's a fantastic piece of kit, this. The motors, they're EX 1202.5, 11,500 kV with these Gemfan 75 millimeter push-on props. And up front, there's a Cadex Ant FPV camera mounted on these alloy plates. And on board this flight controller, there's also a 40 channel 5.8 gig VTX that's power switchable from 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts. And sticking out the back here is this simple WIP monopole VTX antenna. I ordered this GPS version and on the back here there's a mini MA10 unit that's specced with a cold start time of three to five minutes and a warm start of about one and a half minutes. But I'll go into that a little bit more later on. The all up weight of this, well let's have a look. On its own that is 68.5 grams and with this VTC6 18650 cell, just to check that's what it was, it is 113 grams. So let's have a look at how this has been set up in beta flight. So, just check that's talking, that's good. And ports, we have got UART1 that's being used for GPS, that's fine, and UART2 is being used for smart audio for doing power switching. There's no serial RX on this because you've got an integral receiver on the board, an ELRS receiver. Configuration, this all looks pretty standard. The personalization is there with the craft name. We've got the maximum arm angle of 180, which is perfect, which means you can arm when you're inverted. GPS is turned on and U-Blocks protocol selected. Everything else here looks pretty standard. Power and battery. Now, this is the interesting one. Lithium ion batteries, they have a voltage range 4.2, 4.3, down to 2.8, and you can run them right down to 2.8. These are perfect values for the minimum and the warning. So three volts is where you get the low battery warning, and 2.9 is when you're gonna get the low now. 2.8 to 2.9, that's where they're gonna die very, very quickly. So when you get down to 2.9 volts, you really want to be very close to where you're gonna land. And you need to check 
with a multimeter that the voltage on the battery is the same as what you're seeing here. This is what's displayed in the goggles. And those odd 0.1 volts could make quite a big difference. And you can adjust that using these voltage meters down here. You can think of these three adjustments here as fine, medium, and coarse adjustment. I found on this particular quad that the voltage on the multimeter was spot on within 0.05 of a volt to what's displayed up here. Failsafe has been set to GPS rescue, which is fine. Presets, don't worry about those. PID tuning, let's see what we've got here. The P's are pretty much double <laughs> what the defaults are for beta flight 4.3. Yeah, we're running 4.3, you can see up here. Integrals, and they're generally down in the 80s for defaults. So they've been cranked up. Dmax, they're really high. I think these the defaults for these are around about 40, 45. And the derivative, I think that's the same as the defaults. And the fee forward has been wound up a bit. I think the defaults are around about 120, 100, 120. Interesting. So let's see what else we've got. Uh, receiver. Adjustments, don't need any of that. GPS is enabled, but we're inside, so there's nothing happening. You can see GPS is on up here, but I'm inside, so there's no signal. Motors OSD, uh, so look at the video transmitter. So this is set up to start on race band channel four, which is fine, and the power settings are 25, 100, and 200, and it defaults to 200. It's going to be really interesting to see how this flies with these particular PIDs. Very high. Anyway, I think it's about time to get out and do some flying. This flies very nicely and doesn't have any nastiness. It's tuned for smooth cruising, not punchy acros, and it does this beautifully. You'll find the cruise and the hover throttle is quite high, around 50 to 60 percent, and it's a little bit alarming at first. And in level flight, it's drawing around eight to nine amps. When you climb, be really gentle on the throttle. You need to conserve battery as best you can. And you will get blown around by even a gentle breeze, and remember, the wind is stronger the higher you go. And there's a fairly strong wind blowing in from the right, so when I turn around and fly back, it's much harder work and just uses up more battery. The ELRS receiver works really well with a link quality of around 95 to 100, but it generally sits in the 99 to 100, so I feel confident I can fly this a lot further. But the VTX performance is a little bit sketchy. A better lollipop antenna with gain would fix that. And this is why this quad is great fun. You can cruise around, taking in the view for what seems like ages. The Cadex Ant isn't my favourite camera. There's too much contrast for me. And it does seem strange flying analogue with all this noise. I'm so used to digital now and being able to see pretty much everything. I've sped up bits of this footage because this is actually more fun to do than it is to watch. Now I was determined to get 15 minutes on this flight Previous flights were all around 12 to 13 minutes, and I was determined to get 15 minutes on this flight, being really gentle. And I think I would have got there if I hadn't backed into that pesky tree. I blame the wind, pushing me further than I'd expected. I've had great fun with this and flown a good few packs over the last couple of weeks, but there's a few things I'd recommend if you plan getting one, and a few things to be wary of. 
The reason this is so light is because the frame weighs practically nothing, which means it's not that strong. So don't go flying into things like you would do with a five inch quad. It'll break pretty easily. The arms are okay, but the frame is quite fragile. And I've noticed a crack appearing just down here. But fortunately, there's a ready supply of parts. My local supplier in the UK carries, carries various frame parts. In fact, you can buy a complete frame for this for around $10. That way, you've got all the spares in one go. These battery terminals here, they have a habit of disconnecting from the battery. They're sprung, as you can see, but I'd recommend checking them and bending them out a bit if they feel a bit loose. Also, if you drop on anything hard like a path, when the battery dies or you dump it in the grass, the battery has a habit of popping out. And although this has got a buzzer just down here, that'll only work when the battery's connected. And this is so small, it's incredibly hard to find in the undergrowth. I've been putting some tape around the battery, just tape it around there to stop the battery popping out. The ELRS range on this is very good, but this monopole whip antenna for the VTX isn't great. I'd probably put a nice mini circularly polarized lollipop antenna on the back, something like this. It'll fit in there and you can just have it mounted up on the back. It'd be very easy to fit. Now, this is marketed as a long range drone and the GPS version might seem like a really good idea. But to be honest, I wouldn't want to fly this too far because when lithium ion batteries are near the end, they suddenly die and there's no way that this will get home with rescue mode. Also, acquiring satellites takes ages and while it's sitting on the ground waiting, it's drawing about eight or 900 milliamps, which is just eating into your flight time. I got fed up waiting, so I disabled GPS while I was out recently. Plus, if you dump this under a large tree or something and it loses satellites, you can't just arm it and fly it back. It's really annoying. So, I'd recommend you get the non-GPS version and save a bit of money, and I guess a bit of weight. Really, GPS has limited value on this. And finally, check and calibrate the voltage displayed in beta flight using a multimeter. Those few 0.1 volts it may be out could make a lot of difference in flight time, especially when you've flown out a bit further than you should have done. The battery's very low. This is great fun. It's so quiet and stealthy. No one will know you're out there and you're not gonna be bothered by anybody. I think if you remove the GPS to save some weight, fitted a better VTX antenna and use VTC6 18650 cells, you could easily get 15 minutes flight time. But don't go doing punch outs and acro. You need to be really gentle and smooth on the throttle to get those long flight times and keep a very close eye on the battery voltage. When it gets down to around three volts, you need to be close to home. And after 2.9 volts, it'll drop like a sack of bricks. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that helpful, why not subscribe or buy me a coffee? There's all the usual social media links in the description and you might find something useful over here as well. I'll see you next time.